Hello. New to Stardew Valley? Not sure where to get started? Game seems a little overwhelming? In this series, we're going to start out with the basics and move all the way up to the advanced. So this video is going to be the extreme basics just to get you started. When first getting started, we're going to build a new farm. We'll come into here. Right, and we're going to have a bunch of options here. Of course, we can use these arrows to spin our character. We can come through here and select the different styles. So this is a basic character customizer. We're not going to go into too much detail on this. I'll go ahead and show you the uh, color chart a little bit because it might be a little confusing. You see we have eye color. You see how these two bars are kind of in the brownish just because of this top bar here. If I move this top bar around, all right, it changes what color range these two are in. So I want red eyes. I go all the way here and I can do, you know, red type eyes and so forth down to blue. So that's how you mess with the, uh, the colors and then everything else has the same thing. Hair. And then you can change the cover of your pants as well. All right, now a couple options. You have your name. This is just enter your name. All right, then we have your farm name. And when entering your farm name, if you notice here it says farm, this is going to be the end of your farm name. So if we were to go, this is the Bob Farm, it would be Bob Farm Farm. All right, so just keep that in mind. If you don't want it to say Farm Farm, just put the name in here. Usually my first world I'll call Bob. Uh, if you've seen Titan AE, you'll get the joke. But just so I don't get confused, I'm going to call this the my tutorial farm. And then your favorite thing, you just put your favorite thing in here. And there will be events that happen throughout the game, which I don't want to spoil for you. But so, but just know there will be events throughout the game that will say you like such and such. So make sure you put that in here accordingly. Uh, if you want to make it something funny, go for it. <laughs> All right, so we'll go with likes turtles for now. <laughs> go from there. Um, as we go through the tutorial world, you will see what this uh, what this does. All right, and then your animal preference. Do you like dog or cats? And you can choose what kind of dog or cat. There's uh, three choices of each. All right, and this will be an animal that you can adopt onto your farm later in the game. All right, so then while we're still in this option area, you see skip intro. If you've already played the game, this is great. You can skip intro. If you haven't played the game, watching the intro will give you an idea of what's going on. Um, but either way, it's not super important. <laughs> so if you want to skip it, you can skip it. That's how you do it. We'll go ahead and skip it for the tutorial purposes. All right, then we have settings over here on the bottom left. So if we come into advanced game options, all right, there's community center bundles. On your first playthrough, you probably just want to leave it on normal. All right, but if you hold, if you just click this, it, it goes away. So you got to click and hold, and then you can choose remixed. Click and hold, switch back to normal. The community center bundles will require certain uh, items from the game that you can collect. And uh, with normal, they're always the same thing. With remixed, there'll be different things for each playthrough. That way you can uh, maybe mix it up a little bit uh, for your next second, second or third playthroughs. All right, but you probably should want to leave this on normal for now. All right, guarantee year one completable. Right, and it says right here what it, it ensures that the traveling merchant sells a red cabbage seed sometime during the first year. <laughs> and that's all. It, that's pretty much what it does. It guarantees that you can complete all the community bundles in the first year if you really go uh, ham and try and do that. Uh, it doesn't mean you will complete it in the first year. It just means it's definitely completable in the first year if you really, really try. Without this, it may not be completable on your first year, which is not a big deal. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and check that. And we'll get into what the traveling merchant is later on. That's not important for this part of the guide. Mine rewards, same thing. Modifies the rewards that appear in the mines, normal and remix. Uh, probably just stay with normal unless you need a different type of playthrough. Then you can do remix. Spawn monsters on the farm does what it says. Uh, <laughs> once the sun goes down, monsters start coming out and attacking you on the farm. This can make it really difficult to... Uh, <laughs> to farm and do normal activities. Uh, so this is up to you. If you want to do some extra combat, you can do this, uh, but it's going to really hinder you and slow you down. All right, so then there's profit margin, and this affects how much money you can make selling an item. If you want to make the game harder, you can mess with this. Uh, normal is the, is the way the game is meant to be played, but if you want it harder, you can cut the price of your stuff. So if something is worth 60 gold, and you cut it to 50%, it's only worth 30 gold. Right, you cut to 25%, it's only worth what, like something like 15 gold. I'm doing quick math here, so maybe wrong, but <laughs> so there you go. So leave it at normal to get it to be able to have a decent playthrough. If you want to make the game harder, drop those down. 
right? Multiplayer options. Now, if you're going to be playing multiplayer, or you think you may have players joining your world in the future, you'll want to have starting cabins, right? You're going to need a starting cabin for each player you're going to want to join your world. You can have up to three cabins. You can have up to four players in a world. Cabin layout just means how close you want it to be to your house. All right now, if you're not going to have players in the future, having these starting cabins on your farm might reduce the amount of land available on your farm. We'll do one just in case. This is a tutorial world, so it's unlikely I'll do multiplayer on it, but you never know. Uh, cabin layout, where the cabins are placed closer or further away from one another. I like to do nearby, but that's up to you. You can do separate, where they're kind of far away. Do nearby, they're closer together. It takes up, uh, kind of keeps the farm nice and organized. All right, then random seed. Uh, if you don't put your own seed in here, the game will create a seed and generate the random seed for you, which is probably one of the better, more fun options. Uh, if you've looked up a seed that you prefer, then you can put it in here. Or if you just want to go wild and create your own seed, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, this affects things like remix bundles, uh, the daily shop inventories, forageables, bubble spots, help wanted quests, seed makers. Recycling machines, fish ponds, crab pot, garbage cans, grass, trash bear, and more. We're not really going to go into that for this guide. Um, if you're just playing your first playthrough, you probably don't want to worry about that unless you really want to be a min-maxer on your first playthrough. Uh, we can do a min-max guide later if you want. All right, so now the next important thing. What farm do you pick? As you notice, there's a whole bunch of farms. And with a 1.16 update, I believe they're potentially adding another farm. And then if you look, Standard Farm has a description, a simple plot of land, with a large amount of open space to design your farm. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And then you come down, Riverland Farm says, your farm is spread across several islands and scenic riverbanks. Fish are more common here than usual. So, <laughs> Stardew Valley has several options when you're playing the game. You can mine, you can farm, you can fish. I, of course, you can do all of those as well. And you can forage. All right, you can so you'll probably want to do a mixture of them to actually beat the game. You'll you have to do all of them if you want to be a completionist. Uh, so Riverland Farm is probably more for players that want to fish. Um, your land is spread out on the islands; it takes longer to get to them. You have less land to essentially farm with. The Standard Farm is a pretty good farm to learn on. Um, it's kind of small. If you're going to have multiplayer at some point, you're not going. You may not want to do the Standard Farm. Then we have the Forest Farm. The woods limit your farming space. However, the bounty of the forest is nearly at your doorstep. All right, so the forest farm does exactly what it says. You're in a forest, so you're going to have access to more trees, maybe forageables, things like that, but you're going to have less land to farm on. Uh, so this could be an interesting one. All right, the hilltop farm. Rocky terrain and a winding river make it difficult to design your farm. However, a mineral deposit provides mining opportunities. So for this one, it is what it says it is. I mean, he, these descriptions tell you pretty well what your farms are going to be. So the hilltop farm is a rocky farm. You're going to have less farmland. It'll have a river you can go fish at. And then there's an area where you can go mining right off the bat. You can go hit rocks. You mostly get rocks, coal, a little bit of coal maybe, uh, geodes, and, uh, and then some copper. And the, the wilderness farm... There's plenty of good land here, but beware. At night, the monsters come out. <laughs> so if you didn't select the monster option, but you do select a wilderness farm, you're still going to get attacked at night. Uh, so, but you can, it's a decently sized farm, with lots of land to farm on. But you're just going to have to deal with monsters if you're hanging out at your house at night trying to do stuff. Then we have the Four Corners farm. Now this is my preferred farm, because it has four plots of land, so then you can... If you're OCD, you can assign each plot of land to something different. You can have trees in one, farm in another, fish in another, so on. However you want to organize it. You have a lot of land, a lot of options, and uh, it's great for organ. It's great for organizing, and it's the best if you're going to be bringing in friends. Right then, you have the beach farm, and this is probably one of the most challenging farms if you want to farm. Right, as it says, it's good for foraging and fishing, and lots of open space. And then it says supply crates will wash up on shore, but sprinklers do not work in the sandy soil. And eventually you're going to need sprinklers. Without sprinklers, 
you would have to hand water your farm every day. And that can get tedious and take up a lot of time and cause you to potentially miss out on some more fun activities in the game. But if you just want to be a forager and you barely want to farm, this is not a bad way to go. For the tutorial purposes, I'm going to pick the farm that I think is the best, which is the Four Corners Farm. On your first playthrough, the easiest farms to learn the game from is going to be the Four Corners Farm or the Standard Farm. So that's up to you, but the Four Corners Farm allows you to expand later. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.